special great guests with him backstage. Uh, before we meet them, who else has been meeting this week? Oh, well, Boris Johnson met with Sir David Attenborough to announce a new climate change conference. It's a meeting of minds. Uh, <laughs> the world's greatest naturalist observing a golden-crested tit. Yeah. <laughs> They discuss, they discuss the impact of climate change on some of the world's most exotic creatures, like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which reminds me, Donald Trump has been in the news. Yes, he has. <laughs> uh, Trump has been acquitted of his impeachment charges. I, now, it meant he was in confident mood at the State of the Union speech. Uh, that's the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi behind him there, thinking, I wonder if there's a subtle way I can show Trump what I think of his speech. Yes, there was. <laughs> and she actually ripped up Donald Trump's speech. And they're like, those are two things you don't often hear in the same sentence. Donald Trump and ripped. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> uh, so with the impeachment quashed, uh, Trump is now confident he'll get four more years, which by his reckoning makes a total of... Close. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! Series from the creators of Downton Abbey. Please welcome back Thames and Greg, everybody! stars of hilarious new sitcom Intelligence. One is the writer and creator of the series and a rising star of British comedy. The other is simply a sitcom legend. It's Nick Mohammed and the great David Schwimmer! <laughs> Starred in Fox Capture, The Kids Are All Right, Spotlight, and the Avengers franchise as the Incredible Hulk. Please welcome our friend Mark Ruffalo! Bonding and greeting that we lovely. like each other. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, uh, David Schwimmer. You've never been on the show before. I've not. Thanks for never inviting me. Oh, no. That can't be true. That can't be true. No, no. I'm, I'm really... I'm really. Well, we're very nice Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a weird thing. Uh, you don't meet many of these people. David Schwimmer, you are sitting next door to a unicorn. Uh, Mark Ruffalo, tell David an interesting fact about yourself. <laughs> You know the fact. I come from Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's one of them. No, you've uh, never seen Friends, have you? I wish you had. You must have seen, like, a... You must have seen... I've, I've seen a lot of parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... No, no, it's no, not I you. Know, it's, it's totally it's fine. Me. It's, I, I, but that I'm must okay. be rare. It is. It's, I think I'm the... I'm probably... I'm the only one okay, in this audience. Okay, I've got an admission to make, okay? Um, when I was sent the, uh, the script of episodes, and I read the first, uh, ed the first episode of episodes, and it said, uh, and who's going to be in your show? Matt LeBlanc. And I did have to Google him. No! So, yeah, we're I'm so together. sorry, David. It's only supposed to be one I, person. <laughs> and then the rest of the show was just going to be bigging you up. You've but seen now, it, right? You've seen Nick, do you know who he is? <laughs> sorry, which, which sitcom is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm going to get a DVD yeah. set to... to yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, uh, listen, uh, let's start, ladies and gentlemen, with our uh, movie of the night. Mark Ruffalo brings us Dark Waters. Now, this is out on the 28th of February. And it's an extraordinary true story of a kind of cover-up in corporate America that I didn't know. Do Americans know this story? No. Okay, so tell us about the story and who you play. Because he's sort of an unlikely hero in this story. Yes, um... It's about a, uh, a lawyer, uh, a, a chemical defense lawyer, a corporate defense lawyer, who um, hears from a farmer that he knew when he was a boy that his cows were dying and that he thinks it's DuPont's uh, landfill that's, that's killing them. And uh, he says he's going to help this guy out because he's a family friend, and he basically uncovers probably one of the biggest criminal corporate crimes in history where DuPont has poisoned all of us 
in the whole world, we all have these chemicals in us now. Because it revolves around the chemical in, in Teflon, right? Yes, it's uh, the chemical in Teflon, but it's in all of our stain-resistant um, carpeting, uh, fabrics, uh, water-resistant eye uh, makeup. It's everywhere. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> Should we just end the show? The, it, the statistics at the end of this film are mind-boggling. Yeah. This guy is one of the most beautiful, heroic people. He, he, he lost, I mean, any kind of promotions. He gave up uh, his salary. People hated him for this work. And he is the, just the most generous, beautiful guy who did such a great service for all of us. And you're not just saying that because I think he's here. Is he? No, he is, isn't he? Uh, 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 Rob? Rob Ballot? Is it Ballot? Ballot? Yes. Hello, sir. Will you stand up, Rob, please? He hates this. <laughs> so... Extraordinary things, Rob, that sometimes happens to people, that you, you end up being in a movie. Um, but what struck me once is that, so your, your, your wife is also in the yes. movie. Because yes. uh, you have rows in the movie. Like, so, was that okay? Was that okay at home? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that your wife, is your wife with you? No. No, no, okay. <laughs> there we leave Rob the last in the audience. <laughs> and, so, and, and, what you, and, and is this the work you're still doing, Rob? Yes. Yeah, it's still going on. People still bringing cases against DuPont? Yes, and it's spread all over, all over the planet at this point. It's in the water everywhere. It's in everyone's blood in this room. Everyone's blood on the whole planet. If this was a different channel, we'd go to commercial now. <laughs> uh, maybe you can go to a commercial. <laughs> Where we could sell some cleaning products. But, uh, <laughs> Well, listen, I'll tell you all of a clip. This is uh, you talking to your wife, played by Anne Hathaway, the great Anne Hathaway. Yes, right. And uh, it's, it's you kind of railing against the injustice. It's not... They can't go back on everything. Well, they're a titan they of industry. I mean, they can do whatever the hell they want. Nothing else matters. They, they can fight you all they want. It doesn't take away from what you've done. Of course it does. It's exactly what it does. They want to show the world it's no use fighting. Look, everybody. Even he can't crack the maze, and he's helped build it. The system is rigged. They want us to think it'll protect us, but that's a lie. We protect us. We do. Nobody else. Not the companies, not, not, the, not the scientists, not the government. Us. He's actually much more handsome than I played him in the movie. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Talking of when you play real people, David Trimmer, you yeah. uh, famous played uh, the original Kardashian in The People vs. O.J. Robert, Robert Kardashian. Yeah, Robert Kardashian. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, he wasn't around to talk to, but did you get feedback from people who knew him or from the actual, from the rest of the Kardashians? Or? Uh, they, I mean, they had reached out to me, his daughters had reached out to me to, to meet. Um, but I, I didn't really think it was relevant to meet with them because they were so young at the time. And also they wanted to do it on camera, which I didn't see reason <laughs> oh. to do. Oh, thought you'd be um, part of their show. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, We'd love to meet you. <laughs> yeah. But I did, um, I did talk to Chris, um, uh, his, uh, his widow, um, and uh, she was very generous with her time. I spoke to her, spoke to her for about two hours, which was really really helpful really informative so and also is that weird thing that trial was all televised so it's all yeah. you got all that all, to watch. yeah, a lot, yeah. Of, a lot of it's documented yeah so that helps and talking about dark waters one of the good things about i guess for you talking about this film is going in we know dupont did it you can't spoil this plot for us because uh your experience on avengers as you've just You've had a, a litany of plot spoilers. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> me? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> You're marginally better than Tom Holland, but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> What's... I taught Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Don't tell us about the... Was it the premiere of Thor? Uh, oh, Ragnar come on. Oh, go on. Go on. Oh, it's all over now. They is, can't fire is. you. They can't fire you. No, they tried. <laughs> so, if you don't know this story, uh, this is what happened. So they they asked me to do social media backstage, and at that time it was like Facebook Live had just hit the um, the apps, and um, <laughs> and so I, um, I I was back there doing my FaceTime Facebook Living, and um, <laughs> I thought I hit the off button, but I didn't realize it had two different off buttons. And I went on, I went off, ran to my seat, they started the movie, I put my, my, my phone in my pocket, <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching it, and I'm like five minutes in, and my phone is blowing up. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone and their mother was texting me from all over the world to tell me that my phone was on, and I was live broadcasting <laughs> the movie. <laughs> But of course, I'm a gentleman, so I don't check my phone in the movie. <laughs> so finally, they sent a lady down, and she, hey, hey. And I'm like, what, what? And she's like, your phone, your phone is on. I was like, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's in my pocket. She's like, it's on, it's on. <laughs> and I pulled it out, and I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I get a call from Kevin Feige. Oh, the big boss. The boss. He's like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> I said, Kevin, I, it was an accident. I swear to God. I, I, they told me to use the Facebook Live. I don't know how to use it. He's, he's like, <laughs> you can't do this stuff. I was like, no, no, you're right, sir. Yeah, sir, you're right. sir. <laughs> and the next day I showed up to do press. And I'm, I'm, I'm hurting. I, I, I can't look anyone in the eyes. And I walk over to him to say sorry, and he grabs me in a bear hug. And he's like, that was genius! <laughs> we got more press from that than the whole premiere! <laughs> we, couldn't have, we couldn't have imagined doing something that good. All they heard was laughing. Because at Townsend, you, you, know, you didn't see a lot of it, but your, your, was it your, your son brought you to the last one, the Endgame one. Oh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I did know <coughs> a lot... You've never long... seen them. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't... You know, there's a lot of folding of clothes to do at home, so, you know... Um, so, anyway, so I, I said, well, why don't we all go and see Endgame? We'll, we'll go as a family, it'd be a lovely thing, and uh, but, so... But maybe you could help me so I, you know, know a bit of the story. And so one of my sons um, did a, a PowerPoint... <laughs> 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 oh, it was so brilliant. He did a PowerPoint presentation of the whole story up to the end of Infinity War and went through the whole thing. He's really... He's a mathematician. He's, he's very direct. He'll sit there and think, you go, watch the film, back, and he'll tell you in one sentence. He's got this incredible brain. So he did this PowerPoint presentation and then... A little quiz <laughs> at the end, just to test that we were listening. <laughs> and I got full marks on the test. You did? Yeah. Wow. But it's because, why he did it is because he knows that if we were in the cinema, I would be the one going, so what's the, um... <laughs> <laughs> Who's, what's the guy in green? Why is he? Why is he so angry? <laughs> so that's why he did his PowerPoint presentation. It was very helpful. Because I, I feel Nick, I, I, I don't. You can't prejudge people, but you right? seem to me like the sort of person who would be a big fan of these films. Wow, you're such a star! Is that a, is that, that's a nice thing to say, right? It's a, it's a very nice thing to say. I mean. The, the, <laughs> Oh, you're know. in them. Oh. I'm saying he looks like someone who would love these films. You're going, don't be so rude. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know he uh, hates them. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. them. Oh, you don't. Do you no. like them? No, I've just never seen them. I... <laughs> <laughs> You'd love them. You'd love them. <laughs> I would like them.
Yeah. I think that, and I'm not just doing this because of what you did no, to me. No, it's okay. I, just, I didn't do that to him. <laughs> True. Yeah. I wasn't um, to you. No, I just don't know where to start now with them. What should I start with? With the beginning, my son. The beginning. Right. This, you know, <laughs> my son. There's already a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> getting you right. This point. might sound like a stupid question. Is Endgame the last one? <laughs> it's, the most, it's the most recent one. Where's my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you're not going to do... Are you doing more of them? I don't know. <laughs> you haven't said anything bad. No. You just who, said I don't know. Who knows, really? You do. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll stop now, because I... <laughs> Would it be terrible if we got you fired? No. <laughs> uh, no. But, but yes, you are. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's supposed to be over. OK. That was, that was supposed to be the end. That's why they that called it. That was the very it. end. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So okay. you could work backwards. That's the title, Endgame. Yes. 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 <laughs> so here's the thing. So t talking to, to Marco, going back to uh, The Incredible Hulk and reprising that, and, and the odd thing about one of those characters, and, you know, Ross and Friends is one of the things that people keep asking you about going back, but you don't need to, because it, it's... It's still, was it 15 years since you did the last episode? Yeah. And it's still on. People are still coming to it. It's like you are still making it. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> well, it must be the odd, it must be the weirdest thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very similar to being a superhero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of the biggest movies in the world. Um, no, I'm a fan, by the way, of all the movies. So, all of them. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I mean, it's look. It's uh, we're we're both uh, um, surprised. Uh, the whole cast just really surprised and also overjoyed that the show is still finding an audience and and younger generations are are finding something fun about it. Really. But also, you must meet people who are so young and like they're watching for the first My time. My daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter watches it. Well, that, that, you would yeah. think that's like a fun wow. father-daughter activity. <laughs> but no. No, it's not. Yeah. He, he got me. Anywho. <laughs> there you go. And now. <laughs> And David, bring us a new sitcom, Intelligence. It's on Sky One from Friday the 21st of February, also available on Now TV and as a Sky box set from that date. And now, Nick Mohammed, this is your baby. You created it, you yes. wrote it. Uh, yes. Tell us about it. Um, so, it is a, I guess it's a workplace sitcom set in GCHQ, which is a, like, the government communication headquarters. So, like, a, I guess a slightly less... Uh, well, slightly sort of less sort of sexy version of MI5, MI6 in terms of... Uh, or certainly the way they're portrayed in films and things is sort of quite action-y, whereas GCHQ doing a lot of the kind of data crunching and a lot of hugely important work to national security. So that's kind of the backdrop to it. That's, the, uh, that's where, where it's based. And um, it focuses on a, uh, an NSA agent, played by David, um, who comes over and joins a team and sort of massively shakes things up. OK, and who are you? I play an analyst, like a really junior analyst. So the kind of... From like a profile point of view, it's very so similar to real life. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. Here's the thing. So Nick Mohammed, you write your, your this your sitcom for Sky One. Yeah. Great, congratulations. Yes. The question is, how the f did you get David Schwimmer in it? <laughs> <laughs> how did that bit happen? It's genuinely, because he's a great writer. That's great. <laughs> it is really funny. It is really funny. He just emailed me. He just emailed just me with David. a great idea. I was like, that's really funny. But also, you seem like you are a big fan of British comedy. I am. Yeah. How did that sure. happen? How did you get introduced to it? Or uh, I guess I've always been uh, since I was a boy. I mean, I've okay. just I've watched. I think as much as I can. Um, going way back from. I mean, as a kid, you know, Monty Python and yeah, yeah. Clouseau, and I mean, just um, I, I don't know. I've always been a big fan, yeah. and. Um, I don't, I don't feel there's a huge difference between American comedy and British comedy. I, I guess I'm more attracted to character-driven comedy in a very funny situation. I also really like physical comedy, so you guys do a lot of great physical comedy as well. And in this world, because it is quite a specific world that we yeah. don't really know, did they, were you able to go, were you able to visit the, the actual place where they do this work? No. 
No. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was... Because they were obviously no. very security conscious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so boring. Yeah. I, mean, I did a lot of research. I mean, if there wasn't a lot of alarms pinging there with my name, you know, just... <laughs> Hey, Mr. Muhammad yeah. is uh, yeah. doing us again. <laughs> looking into the specifics of terrorists. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a great cover, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just writing a TV show. <laughs> yeah. No, it, no, it's not a cover. No, we were lucky um, it's enough. A... <laughs> well, it's a really elaborate cover. They've yeah. made it now. Yeah. <laughs> My plan was to come on this. <laughs> um, I mean, we and it's all it. working. <laughs> it's all working. <laughs> show any of that. Um, <laughs> so, you play... Uh, America comes over, and I think our clip is uh, you, briefly right. after you've arrived, oh, right. and, uh, and Nick is trying to show you the way to the toilet. Oh, right. Do it again. No, hang on. Swipe again. Wait, sorry, swipe it again. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, crikey. It's fine. It's fine. Let me just type this in. Yeah. So, so, Jerry, can you just... Sorry, can you just read me from the fourth... From, the, from four, what? From, from the fourth? Four, the four. There's no four. Uh, well, you mean the one? The four. No, oh, the one is the one. It's one, the one. Nine, 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 two, two, seven. Okay, that should be it. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, this. We have a thumb thing just in case. Uh, it doesn't always work. Yeah, why did you do that to begin with? It's because I've been eating crisps and it doesn't always work. <laughs> oh. Give, me, give me your thumb. You, what's wrong? You very small. Ow! Okay, there you go. Okay. okay I'll stop crying out loud. I'll do the, uh, I'll do the red thing. It's fine. Come on, man. Come on. I don't even like that. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, I've got a lazy eye, so sometimes. Can you lift me up? Anyway, based Nick on your own work for the government, because you did work for a government department, didn't you? Very briefly. I mean, I yeah, as a student, I worked for Department for Work and Pensions. But I, I worked at Morgan Stanley after I graduated, just before the crash. <laughs> just a coincidence. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess it's slight, it slightly is. I, I kind of love those those environments where I mean, particularly with Morgan Stanley, where the stakes are kind of pretty high, I'm mean, not uh, on the level of GCHQ, but there is still a kind of a, I guess, a, a sort of an everydayness to it, an ordinariness to it that you kind of get kind of used to. And in fact, one of the storylines in, in, well, that sort of kickstarts one of the episodes is that my character sort of deletes a load of really important files. And that was based on real, like it, at Morgan Stanley, I accidentally deleted... Um, <coughs> Lots of money. Well, kind of, yeah. Which is why we had to crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was, I think... It was important enough that when I left, they mentioned it in the leaving. <laughs> I thought it was fine, but they, it, they were basically automatic, uh, automatic trades, so effectively like standing orders. And I thought that I was deleting... I was just playing around with what I thought was a mirror server so that if I deleted them, it wouldn't really matter because it wasn't like real world. It was just sort of reflecting what was really going on. But I was really deleting them, so it was pretty... Yeah. OK. I think, long story short, is we're very glad you're now working in comedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We can all breathe a sigh of relief yeah. <laughs> that you found you found your niche in life. Yeah. That's all. If you good. turn the TV on to watch it and it's not there, it's because you've gone delete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the thing is, uh, you know, we all do other jobs when we're when we're starting out, and uh, lots of people do the classic catering. Uh, David Trimmer, you went one up from waiting tables. You did waiting tables with a little bit extra. I waited tables for a long time, about seven years. But my first gig. Um, was as a roller skating waiter uh, at this. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was. I was good. Um, <laughs> and it was at this really cool place in Chicago. Really cool. It was. It was called. <laughs> it's called Ed De Bevick. I worked at Ed De Bevick's. <laughs> That's right, they opened one the in L.A. The stars that came out of this place. Because <laughs> you had to play a character. Yeah, I was Romeo. I was Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> you roller skated, no. No. Oh, oh, so no. only Romeo roller skated? Was no, that no well, in Chicago, they had roller skating. Oh, right. So, um, and I was uh, roller skates and... 
Um, and, the, and I was serving all the outdoor tables. So there was a huge parking lot and a pretty wide sidewalk with tables lined up like picnic tables where families would come and, and you'd make not very much money um, with minimum wage um, uh, in the States, as, as you're aware. Uh, but you made a lot of money by performing stunts. So I would, like, line up people's kids, and they would, like, you know, uh, they would, you know, kneel next to each other in a line. I could probably jump over three or four. At a time. <laughs> I'm serious. And then I would say, hey, you guys want to see it? You know, the parents were like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I, and I just, like, I would just take off down the street and jump uh, all over, uh, I mean, over, over them, and then, and then uh, kind of, like, skid to a stop. And then I'd get, you know, all these fancy tips from doing it. But you had to play a character, and my character was like uh, Romeo the Romancer. You know, he was kind of based a little on Travolta in, you know, Greece or something. You know what I mean? Hey. It was a 50s diner, so I had a big pompadour and, you know, bigger muscles at the time. <laughs> is, is this from that time? Is this when you were Romeo? No. <laughs> oh, man. That look at that. It's that was a whiff of Travolta. I had that oh, earring. I had, cool, that, I had that earring. That screams Romeo. Yeah. No, but my hair was not as long as that. It was more of a pompadour. But, oh, okay. Yeah, similar, okay. similar embarrassing time. And now, is there, a, is there a reason why they didn't transfer the roller skating to the new branch in L.A.? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but wasn't there a story where the, somebody's stunt went wrong <laughs> and they stopped the roller skating? They're really lawsuit happy there. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Is that, oh, well, that, I, I did you ever to go do. to the L.A. Uh, at DeBevix? No, I think yeah. by the time I got... It was gone. Yeah, it was gone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad. Yeah, yeah, Rob Ballard. Rob Ballard, Ballard is doing a class action <laughs> of people who got hit by roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your next movie. That's your yeah. next movie. <laughs> next movie. <laughs> yeah. Dark catering. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you that's not crazy. just waited tables. You were a bartender, and I just love the idea. You would be such a good bartender, Marco Flo. Thank you. A generous... You, don't you know he'd do a generous pour? He would always do a yeah, poor yeah. Mark I, 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 I would do a generous yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly because people would be like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but no, but didn't you? You had your own cocktail. I had the margarita. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going with Ruffalo, but no, Margarita. But I ended up having, uh, you know, I'd start early and I'd have my, my Thursday night crowd. Yeah. Partially because, and I'm sorry, Sean McPherson, wherever you are, I gave away a lot of free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't a great quality in a bartender. But you were good dealing with, with uh, drunk customers, which is a... I, I had to yeah. deal with a lot of drunk people, yes. And um, sometimes they were not very nice. No. There would be nights where I'd be up to my eyeballs and a-holes. Um, I'm and... saying nothing. <laughs> Can I keep going? I don't know what it's supposed to mean. What? Wait, what? What did I say? <laughs> nothing. Is that a spoiler? No. Is everyone... No. <laughs> nothing. Is Marvel going to call me? No. <laughs> So, no, wasn't there a guy who wanted, uh, wasn't there a drunk guy? Oh, I get it! Yeah! <laughs> wasn't there a drunk guy? It wasn't that kind of bar. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't there a drunk guy who wanted, uh, Sambuca? Yes, there was. Okay, so tell us about him. So, occasionally, um, you would get someone who was so obnoxious, and, uh, it was the end of the night, and this guy came in, and he's like, ah, oh, and he was wasted, and he was such an a-hole. And uh, he's like, I want a Zambuca. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, you, you, you're doing okay. <laughs> he's like, give me a Zambuca. <laughs> and... <laughs> Did he hit okay. his knee like that? <laughs> but at the bar. I thought, yeah. Give me a Zambuca. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I pour him the Zambuca. Light it! I'm not going to light your drink, man. I don't like drinks. Okay, you want to light your drink, you light your drink yourself. Light it! Okay. <laughs> I light the drink. He takes it. And it goes all over his face, dripping down his face, blue flames everywhere. <laughs> and I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> And he's... 
beats the hell out of himself to get it out. <laughs> Give me another! <laughs> oh, sure thing. <laughs> you want me to light it for you? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Same thing all over again. It was one of the greatest nights. <laughs> I sort of like him for having another one. I, 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 I love him. He, he walked out with like a, like a, a, a flaming red goatee. Oh. Oh, that brings back a really painful memory. It was you? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, when I was, when I was, <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. No, when, I was, when I was like 12, 13. I I I was late, I was a late bloomer, but I had a premature mustache, like I had, I had hair there and nowhere else, right? Uh, I mean my head, of course. <laughs> and uh, and I was begging my dad because kids were making fun of me, like, hey, you stash swimmer, you must, you know. And so I was begging my dad, hey, can I please shave? And my dad was like, you're too young to shave. I'm sorry, but I was. <laughs> I took matters into my own hand, and I borrowed some of my sister's nair. Oh, no. And, and, and for those of you who don't know, it's like a chemical hair removal. It's, it, we got an IMAC. IMAC. IMAC, yeah. Oh, okay, so I put it on my lip, but I left it on too long. <laughs> so I had a burn mark. <laughs> Just like the guy. Just like the guy. Only, uh, it was, you know, I had to then go to school, and everyone knew I had tried to take my hair off, and they're like, what the... <laughs> so all these other names. So I'm sorry to bring up, we live that, that trauma, but I want to share that. So. Very good. Uh, moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, Tams and Greg, a very posh new product for It's called Belgravia. Uh, this will be on ITV next month. And this is from the creators of Downton, but it's not Downton. It's set earlier, isn't it? It's 18... I mean, it begins 1815, but then most of it's 1840s kind of thing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm on it. OK, so uh, <laughs> who do you play? What is this world that we're uh, being introduced in? This is the world in the middle of the 19th century when the middle classes were rising up and threatening the elite, the upper classes. I play Anne Trenchard, who is from the rising classes, the nouveau riche. She has a secret which she reveals to her nemesis, played by Harriet Walter, who, uh, and this is a catalyst for all sorts of terrible things to, uh, to, to occur. And it is kind of brilliantly twisty turny, and as you mentioned, it's a bit of, you know, because a lot of times in these sorts of series, it's just the rich people and then the staff. And this is a kind of a world we haven't seen before, this kind of merchant class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are as rich as the rich people. Absolutely. And uh, James Trenchard, who Anne Trenchard is married to, played by the wonderful Philip Glenister, is the epitome of the merchant class who's basically built Belgravia, which is this very um, wealthy area of London, um, which uh, um, was built by the Cubitt brothers, and he goes into business with them. So he suddenly has the kind of power and access which, you know, a, a, an oik, a grunt, shouldn't have. OK, we've got a clip. Uh, this is you talking to Lady Brockenhurst, played by Harriet Walter, uh, with whom you shared your secret. What are you doing? I'm getting to know the grandson who's been concealed from me for a quarter of a century. But why so publicly? Can you see that half the room is asking who this strange young man could be? Of course, that must worry you. Sophia's memory, your reputation. You want them to guess. You want them to guess he's Edmund's child and you wanted us to witness it. Then you will not have broken your word. But the secret will be out. I think the Darbys are just leaving. Would you forgive me if I go down and say goodbye? for, you know, a, a huge sitcom or a big movie franchise. Uh, but Tams and Greg, uh, global recognition from a radio show, the Radio 4, The Archers. Yeah, from my voice, yeah. Yes. Now, I don't know, uh, yeah. Nick, you must know The Archers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so Nick. what do you like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, no, I, yeah. yeah. You guys, do you know The Archers? Do you know of The Archers? Sure. I, <laughs> 
<laughs> you, it's, a, it's the everyday, it's an everyday, what is it, everyday of a rural folk? It's an folk. everyday tale of farming folk that yeah. started in 1951. It was, a, you know, it was a, a radio show, it's a continuing drama. It's been going since then for more than 60 years. What, who do you play? So I play a character in that uh, who, who's a farmer. Uh, she's the daughter of the richest farmer in the, in the area. She now lives in Hungary and she runs a big farming concession there in Hungary but also comes over to cause trouble. Mm. And they moved me out to Hungary when I became less available to voice Debbie right. Aldrich. But you still right. dip in. I, I dip in every now and then, but people do tend to remember my voice. But sometimes uh, it's not your voice. Wasn't, were you in a DIY shop? OK, so I was n nine months pregnant with my last child, so I was really big. And I was, you, you get to nine months, you think, oh, I'd better decorate, because that's the best time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I was on my hands and knees, trying to get some paint from the bottom shelf, at, right at the back. So my big pregnant ass was right up in the air, like going down like that. And I heard someone from behind me say, well, if it isn't Debbie Aldridge. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the name of the character right, that I play. Uh, yeah. On the radio. Uh, yes. On the radio. <laughs> <laughs> but you well, said... Who we, was the guy? <clears throat> who, the guy? I, don't, I had no idea. Oh, was the, the random was. person? He just... I don't know... A how. fan. He was a fan. How did he recognise you, seriously? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> was it because of the... Us. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> did the character... Was she known to have a... No! No, I don't know it's how radio. it happened. radio. You really haven't listened to the archers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't discuss Debbie's arse. <laughs> Can you imagine them saying, oh, yeah. Debbie's arse. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of show. <laughs> There's not the kind of show. But you, but you still go up to Birmingham to do it. And now, do you still drive yourself? I used to drive a lot, just go up and down. And um, I, I'd planned it perfectly. I had to leave the house at 830 to get to the recording studio, which was two and a half hours away in Birmingham at 11 o'clock. And so I parked my car outside the house where I was living in, which was on a single yellow line, which means you can only park there until a certain time. I thought that was 8.30. I parked it there. At about 8.15, I heard this noise outside and I thought, it's not, it's not the bin men today. The, the the garbage collector. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good, very good. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said, it's not, it's not a bin day. What's the, that truck? I looked outside and my car was being put on the back of a tow-away truck because it, I was only allowed to park there until 8 o'clock. And it was... I know, people are tutting for me. <laughs> That's the real British way. They go... <laughs> oh, cup of tea, dear. <laughs> <laughs> to get over the loss of your car. And um, so I rushed outside and I was saying to the guy, the car, the car is sort of swaying about this, and I said to the guy, oh, what I wanted to say was, I have to drive to Birmingham now to do my job. Please could you not take my car, because I will lose my job. I was panicking. And what I said was... You can't do this to me. I'm in the archers. <laughs> <laughs> Were the archers fans? <laughs> yeah. The guy looked at his mate. He goes, "Put the car on the fucking back." <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, it's time for music. This 15-time Grammy Award winner has been writing songs since the age of 12, including hits like Falling, Empire State of Mind, and Girl on Fire. Here performing her new single, Underdog. Please welcome Alicia Keys. <laughs> Me and my guy Graham, you know, we wanted to vibe on this song with you. So let's feel good tonight. Hey, come on.
That was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Come in and say hello to everybody. Oh, there's a, a shift on the sofa. Plenty of room? Is yeah, this fine? Uh, yeah, wherever. We had now. to add some more feminine energy out here. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> I just touched your bum. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just in case somebody saw that. And that is from uh, the new album, Alicia. Yes. Uh, is this out now? Is it out now? March 20th. Oh, you're so on it. Well done, hey. you. Yeah. <laughs> and now I heard you talking about this album, and you were saying it's sort of. Uh, it, the, you feel it's a different side of an issue that we haven't seen before. I wanted to show all sides of me. I think that in some ways I haven't shown the full breadth of all that I am. And I think sometimes we get a little nervous about showing, like, call it anger or call it sensuality, call it vulnerability, and all of these things. Freedom is what I'm expressing in this music, so I love it. Good for you. And, uh, so that's out in March. <laughs> And then, uh, is it the European bit of the tour starts in, in Dublin on the 5th of June? It sure does. <gasps> Love you are coming. Oh, yeah, there you are. It, uh, boom, yeah. look at all those dates. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Smiling now. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what we have to. Uh, Dublin on the 5th of June. And uh, talking of big fans of people, uh, David Schimmer, you are. I mean, Oh, yeah, huge. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh. Fallen, Fallen is one of my... For real? For real. Your head is in our way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you uh, in concert in London, I assume, this summer, then? I am. I'll be there. All right, because I'll be there. I'll be in Manchester, I'll be, I'll be in there. London. You come to all of them. Come to Dublin, too. Come to Germany. Come wherever you want. I'll be in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Although a very big fan. <laughs> Uh, yeah. no, he has things to do. He's busy right now. Uh, listen, uh, good luck with the tour, the thank record, you. and thank you so much for that five minutes forward. Alicia Keys! And right, that's nearly it. Where we go at just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who is there? Ooh. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, what's your name, sir? My name's Nick. Nick, lovely. And where are you from, Nick? I'm from New Zealand, but <gasps> I live here. Oh, you live here? <laughs> and next Wednesday. What do you do here? I'm a paramedic. A, par a proper job and everything. Yes. We're glad you're That's here. Important. Yes. 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 Uh, okay, off you go with your story, sir. Uh, so, when I was a paramedic back in New Zealand, uh, one Sunday afternoon, I went to a guy that chopped uh, three fingers off from the lawnmower. Ooh. And we packaged his hand up. We had to look for his fingers in the bush and the hedge oh. and everything like that. And we rushed him to hospital because if they get to hospital in time, they can reattach the fingers. And on the way to hospital, I said, you're 40 years old. How do you know not to put your hands at the bottom of a lawnmower? And he <sighs> said, I was driving home one, uh, this afternoon, and I saw that a guy had picked up the lawnmower, turned it on his side, and walked across the front of his hedge. <laughs> and he said, that's a brilliant idea. I need to do that. <laughs> so he did his lawns, and then he did that. And as he turned up to hospital, we walked into recess to see the surgeon, and we walked past another person and he said, Hey, this is the guy I saw doing the <laughs> And he cut off three of his fingers as well. You can walk it. Walk, walk, walk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go in that red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Alicia Keys, everybody. <laughs> Tamsin Gray. Singer-songwriter Sam Smith, comedian Alan Carr, Sydney star Oti Mabusi, actor Anna Kendrick, and the one and only Justin Timberlake. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye.